time me and you face to face with everybody? You want to do it? <laughs> hey everyone, how are you? Chrissy, say hi, buddy. Say hi, everyone. Say hi. Say hi. Good. Okay, I'll move out of the way. You want me to out of your live stream? That'll be just your live stream. Go ahead, live stream on your own. This all you, bro. Don't sit and look at me. They don't want to stare at your bum. They want to stare at your face, bro. Not your bum. There you go. Cruzy bear front and center. You got to face that way, though. That's where, the, <laughs> that's where the camera's at. Hey, they're right there, bro. Right there. You see them right there? They're right there. They're right there. <laughs> they're right there. Not over there. <laughs> Cruzy, they're right there. Right there, buddy. Where you at? Where is everybody? They're right there in the camera, bro. Not over there. <laughs> Cruzy, right here. <laughs> Where they at? They're not out the door, bro. You're standing right beside them. You can't find them? They're right there. <laughs> Cruzy's confused. I'll get you some treats though. Hey buddy, we're live streaming right now on YouTube. There we are, buddy. All right, let's get cozy here. We say, Cruzy. Put on the slippers. Oh. Dad's getting comfy, buddy. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the live stream. <laughs> Thought it might be fun to start this off with Sir Cruzy Bear. <sighs> How's your day, everyone? <laughs> I am having an absolutely fabulous day. Yesterday, I took a proper day off for the very first time. Hold on, let me pull you guys up so I can see your comments. Ooh. Oh, what's wrong with me? I can't type. Y O U T U B E. YouTube. <laughs> oh my gosh. My face sometimes. Pop out chat. Let's go. It's frozen on my face right now, and I'm like, <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay. Let's get the desk set up. There we go. Now we're good to go. Hey, are we live? What's up, everyone? Uh, Michael, Michael Proctor, thanks for that. I should set this up differently. I'm gonna try something different. Sorry. I'm gonna try something really different. I'm gonna try. Huh. Be nice to prop this behind the camera so I'm not looking away from you guys you know that's still awkward <laughs> seven years on youtube and i'm just about seven years on youtube and i'm still trying to figure this thing out <laughs> uh van life with gina thank you for that i appreciate that michael proctor uh hello chrome from the truck driver in sillier city siller city north carolina Thank you so much for that. And appreciate you guys all popping in here on my live stream right now. Ah, uh, Kim Jones, thank you. Treats for Cruzy Bear. Kim, you are a freaking rock star. And I appreciate you buying dinner for, uh, um, for Shane the other day. Super cool. That was really awesome. So 
I'm going to wait for some more people to come in here and I'm going to tell you guys what I've been doing. It's not that exciting. I haven't been doing anything, to be honest. <laughs> I just didn't know what to write in the thumbnail of this video. So I'm like, why no videos? I don't know what to call it. Lisa Marie Coleman, lunch for you and Cruzy. Oh, got the 2000 plus and love it. That's cool. That's actually a damn good battery, that one. Jeremy Fawson just gifted five memberships. So who's going to get those memberships? So gifted YouTube memberships. So you get to see some behind the scenes stuff. It was gifted to Carlos, Carlos Gregory, uh, Janie, 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 uh, Grill, yeah. And Brandy also gifted a YouTube membership, which went out to Alan. Thank you guys for gifting memberships to other people, man. I love that stuff. So appreciate it. Michael Edward Donovan. Hello from Don and Donovan from Arizona. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the stream. You guys are being so generous today. I appreciate that. Wanda, shout out from Pennsylvania, Kentucky, slash Kentucky. Reno, Nevada's in the house. Carrion, treats for Cruzy Bear and Ruby in uh, Victoria, Australia. What's up? Welcome to the stream and thanks for the love. How many coats of black did we do on the walls upstairs of the new shop? <laughs> Two of them so far, there will be three coats of black in total. So after all the trim and stuff's put on upstairs, there will be a third coat of black added. Uh, Phoenix Adventures, your shop looks amazing. Thank you. I'm feeling very, very good about it. Alan just gifted a uh, YouTube membership and was given to Danielle. <laughs> so fun. So YouTube memberships, believe it or not, has really changed a lot. They're they've starting to add a lot more new things to it. And I think as of January, I'm shutting down my Patreon and just doing YouTube memberships because with all the cool things that are going on there, I'm stoked on it. Ah, uh, Mimi, thank you. Mike Grady, what's up, weirdo? Chrome, you look thin. Did you lose any weight? No, I think... <sighs> Sorry, I just got the sniffles. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to sneeze. No, I didn't lose any weight. I just think that now that this shop's coming together, my stress levels are relieving. Believe it or not, when Chris came out here and got the upstairs painted for me, a ton of stress just went away. And now over the next couple of weeks, these things are coming together so fast around here. We should be wrapped up in this shop by the end of the month. So I think I'm just feeling a lot, you know, lighter and less stressed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that stress was weighing in on my face quite heavy. Stephanie says, love the gifted membership option. It's cool, right? Just little things like that that just, it's just fun. I love it. Wild Hair says, you look happy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wild Hair says, you look happy, dude. I am very, very happy. Um, yesterday, sorry. Yesterday, I took a proper day off. I haven't had... Okay, so being a YouTuber is quite crazy. So you film everything that you do. Every time you make a coffee, every time you go to the store, every time you get gas, your, your camera's on everything. And yesterday, I felt normal. <laughs> I took a proper day off. Full on proper day off. Me and Cruzy went for a nice big walk around the waterfront here in Nanaimo and all up through town. Went out for breakfast, went out for dinner just had a normal day where the camera wasn't on at all. I didn't touch YouTube whatsoever. I made a community post on on uh, YouTube memberships and stuff like that, but that, that was about it. It was, I felt normal. <laughs> it's so weird not to be like running around with a camera in front of my face going blah, blah, blah. It was uh, quite awesome. And believe it or not, I feel like I should take more 
personal days like that without the camera. It was actually really, really, really enjoyable. But the hard thing I find with that in the past was you get in those moments and you just want to share it with your biggest crew, which is you guys. You're like, gosh, oh, it's too damn beautiful to hoard this great moment to myself. So we ended up lifting the camera anyway, but not yesterday. The reason why I didn't care about not filming yesterday is because you guys seen every place that I went yesterday already. So filming it again would be, you know, yeah. It's 5, 10 p.m. here in British Columbia. <laughs> when am I coming to Ontario to come camp with me as I research the wild, man? I probably won't be until next year when I come back to Ontario, but we will be doing a, probably another East Coast trip. My plan for that one would probably be next year. I'd love to do like from Newfoundland, from Vancouver Island to Newfoundland. So if you look at Canada as a chunk, from the island on the farthest west coast to the island on the farthest east coast, maybe next year. <laughs> That's 8 p.m. out there on the east coast. Yeah, you guys are three hours ahead from where we are here. Mastiff Nomad, I love all your content, Chrome. I come here to watch, whoa, it's flying fast. I come here to watch Van City's van life, not someone else's, so ignore all the trolls saying you're doing it wrong and keep doing you, bro. I really appreciate that. But the reason why sometimes, sometimes I do bring that up in videos, and I know you guys call me on it, but it weighs on my mind a lot when when sometimes my videos can be a lot of the shop stuff like i know i felt a lot of pressure during the breakdown time because i know you guys wanted to go out and adventure and go camping but i just couldn't and now that we're getting so close to travel season i have this big shop that's tying me down here a little bit until we get a chance to leave so this shop has to be completed before i hit the road so we're gonna be around here for a little while longer. And the reason why I bring that up in my videos is because sometimes I feel bad that I'm not out doing camping and all the stuff we normally used to do. That um, I wake up in the morning and we come here to the shop and we work. So that's why sometimes I bring it up sometimes because I feel I feel like I'm dragging you guys through, <laughs> through this side of my van life. And I know a lot of you aren't so, so into it. I know my biggest fans don't care. They're like, yeah, Chrome, film it all. We don't care. And I appreciate that. But I do think about you guys on days when, like today I was running around filming today. I'm like, do you guys really want to watch me run around and do this stuff? I get in my own head. As someone said, it's snowing on the East Coast right now. Heard Ontario got it. Heard Calgary got it. And it is stunningly sunny outside right now. Beautiful. Where's the movie star at? Movie star is right. Cruzy, someone called you the movie star, bro. <laughs> He's right there at my feet, sitting in front of the heater. He always sits in front of the heater. That's his uh, favorite place. If I shut the heater off, he'd probably go sleep in the front seat. Pool, 15 inches of snow. Someone just said no snow in Ontario. Yeah, crazy. Woodsman wants my P.O. box. I don't put my P.O. box out there publicly because it just gets piled full of stuff. I appreciate you guys sending me gifts and I love it. But sometimes it just it bogs it down quite a bit. So we don't give out the P.O. box very often. Ooh, man, these chats are going by. <laughs> Made it by Mandy. Welcome to the stream, Mandy. Mandy's like, better not snow here again. I, I hope not. It's stunningly beautiful here. <clears throat> Tracy from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. You give me, where is that? You have given me a strong desire to do van life or get an ambulance. Wicked, an ambulance is a cool platform. 
Wanda said cuddle bug. If you're talking about Cruzy Bear, you're absolutely right. He wasn't always a cuddle bug. There was a big chunk of his life where Cruzy was like, don't touch me, dad. <laughs> I'm like, I got a dog so we can cuddle at night. But when he was younger, he didn't want to cuddle. When he was a pup pup, different. But now he, now he's right up on me. He just, every night, just snuggles right up like in my chest area every night. It's quite awesome. Oh, I unplugged it. Someone said it snowed in Ottawa, Canada last night. <laughs> so cruisy bear shirts. Yes, we will be doing more cruise shirts. Um, probably won't be until I come back from my summer travels though. We just don't have time to be releasing any more stuff right now. So yeah, not unless I, I, I think if we do release any more shirts, I will wait until, uh, until I come back, but if I do, I still I have to find another shirt printer. The other guys that were printing my shirts messed up the last run and I decided to pull the plug on, on them. So until we start doing them ourselves, I might hold off on some things. Yes, Cruzy is definitely my personal heating pad, 100%. How long is summer travel time? Six months. Ideally, that would be my normal summer travel is usually six months. We usually leave May 1st and come back sometime November. Um, usually. Or late October. But that all that, that usually all depends on where I go. And right now I'm a little bit worried because I heard gas prices are supposed to go up to uh, $2.50 Canadian per liter this summer. If that happens, I'm not sure what the outcome of travel season is going to be if it is that crazy. Right? What's going on outside? Well, you guys want to go see what he's doing? Where is he going? You think he's going to dig outside my shop? No, it sounded like he went too far. We uh, we still have some excavating to do out in front of my shop. I don't know if he went out there or not. So yeah, summer travels are usually six months. You are the best travel guide for Canada, Chrome. I appreciate that. I love it. Yeah, I seen that. Someone just said diesel in BC is now cheaper. I just seen that. Usually diesel is more export more expensive than gas, but yeah, it has been it has been cheaper. Uh, did I get my hydro back yet? Yes, we got the hydro back at the shop. We're just waiting for the 200 amps of power to be put in. We're waiting for BC Hydro right now. So they're putting in a brand new power pole behind the shop, which will bring a ton of power over here. And then 200 amps of that will be submitted to my shop. Mm. Pixie Sparkle Pants. <laughs> I must have missed something in there. On my phone, I only see like two or three comments. But on here, I can see them all. But I've been watching on my phone. Vintage Vehicle Adventures from Lethbridge, Alberta. I used to have family in Lethbridge, but then I decided to boycott my family, so now I don't got any family at all. I got you guys, though. That's all I need. <laughs> When's the bathroom going in? So we're laying the floors upstairs this weekend. All the laminate floors are being laid in. Then we're going to attempt doing the window trims. I bought all the window trim today. All that stuff will be in tomorrow's video. But I bought all the window trim and stuff today. And then we're attempting to do the baseboards and window trim on my own and around the doors, floors, etc. Um, the framer guy is coming on Monday or Tuesday. So if there's anything left over that I didn't get finished or didn't feel good about finishing, the framer will come in and finish it. But right now I'm just trying to save as much because we've put too much into this project already. And I need to pause <laughs> putting any more I have a small budget left to finish off a few more things in here because I need to save for travel season. I got to keep something or we can't travel. 
Musky Queen, the shop looks amazing. I love the black, even though I was skeptical. I love that. It's fun sometimes to read everybody that says, don't do that, don't do that. And then when I ended up, end up doing opposite of what they say, they end up going, damn, that's not bad. So I'm a hugely visual guy. So I see things. Just cruising by again. <laughs> um, I see things very visually in my head. So in times like that, like I, I kind of really get a good view of the upstairs. Step Van Dance says, uh, shop's looking pretty sharp. Are YouTube memberships better than Patreon? Great Power 60 asks. It's kind of the same thing, but I'm ditching Patreon as of January or the end of December, it's gone. So I'm gonna focus on YouTube memberships because it will allow me to do more with you guys. It also allows me to do live streams just for members. It also allows me to share YouTube shorts just for members. Things that Patreon just doesn't really do well. YouTube's starting to really, really make those a lot better. So I would say memberships for sure. Matthew, when you leased your shop, are you responsible for all the repairs slash upgrades or the owner? <clears throat> so because my shop is leased, there are things in here that are full on my responsibility. Some things in here are owner's responsibility. <clears throat> but at the end of the end of the day, it's a commercial building. So any leasehold upgrades that I needed past what the owner was willing to offer with the business, I had to go in. So just say you're in a shop like this and it offers 12 plugs and I want 24 plugs. Well, the other 12 plugs are on my dime. Say he wants to put six lights in the shop. I want 12. The other six are on my dime. So that's how you know, commercial building, like usually if you come into a commercial place and it's already built, then you're responsible for any changes you need to make in there, all of them. In this scenario here, you have a building that was empty, so anything that I needed to do that was specific to me was on my bill. And then other things were owner's responsibility. But, but, I got this shop at such a good deal for the first year, putting any leasehold improvements in here, um, way, way worth the other side of that. So if he were to, would have done the renovations before I moved in, my rent would have been out of reach, way out of reach to the point that I'm like, I, this is not financially feasible to run a business at that monthly rate. So it was actually cheaper to put money into the lease and take a lower rent for a longer term. Worked out cheaper. So that's what I did. Do I ever get depressed? No. Um, I get down on I get down on myself sometimes, but I don't get depressed. I I I do a very good job at inspiring myself and keeping myself driven towards something. I always got something to do to keep me busy here. Like I find, I think if I didn't have so much to keep me busy, maybe I'd get into my head and just tear myself down on the inside and then have a problem. But no, I don't get depressed. That takes time. <laughs> Depression takes time and I don't got time for that. Do you have an updated rendering photo of the shop? No, I don't. We are literally sticking to the design images that uh, my designer Tress sent me. <clears throat> uh, am I gonna have toys at the new shop? Uh, pretty much products, for those who don't know why they said toys. I call the new business van toys. Are you gonna have toys that fit SUVs too? Yes, we'll be carrying everything van life related. The everything that I can that's van life related. It'll take a while to build that store up you know, to kind of get a, a, a huge number of products. But yes, it'll be everything van life related. So, you know, think about it. A fridge will fit in a car. It doesn't really matter what you're in, but it's anything van life and overland related. Do I have mechanics lined up for the new shop? This is not a mechanics business. So here we'll be doing four by four kits 
WellTech Designs suspension kits will be sold and added to vehicles here. And then uh, off-road accessories, things like that. You know, bumpers and winches and all that kind of stuff. No mechanical work will be done in here unless it's something specific for a customer. Say a customer brings in a Ford Econoline van and they're getting a WellTech Designs lift kit installed onto it and the ball joints and stuff are gone and these new tie rod ends, all that stuff can get done in-house right here. So all the mechanical work, any brakes and stuff that need to be upgraded can all get repaired here before the WellTech kit goes on. That way the customer gets to leave here in a fully done out rig ready to go. But we'll be doing rims and tires and all that stuff here. Did I hear you are renting? Yes, I'm leasing this shop. What do the four earrings mean? Nothing. <laughs> they don't mean a damn thing. You're only selling Ford stuff. So, um, no. So we're selling like SOK batteries. We're selling Iceco fridges and a bunch of camping gear and off-road accessories from light bars to winches to re, you know, recovery gear and traction boards and things like that. So, but our primary focus here will be Ford Econoline lines from the beginning because that's what I have. And because I have a Ford Econoline, there is a lot of a Ford Econoline people that watch my channel. So mainly for a lot of the bigger things like the four x four conversions and the lift kits, we'll be focusing on Ford Econolines from the beginning because I wanna do a few things really good. It's better than doing 50 things mediocre. So we'd like to stick to a few things and make sure they are like absolutely top notch before we start getting into other things. Yes, I'm working on selling the Sirocco fans. But yeah, so pretty much if you look around my van, if it's in my van and I use it, it will be on my store. That's the plan. Did you find the best material for your shirts? See you later, Mike. Are you coming back tomorrow? That's my my electrician. Uh, what is that question about shirts? No more short sleeved merch? Yeah, we have uh, our What's Up Weirdos t-shirts are up on the store right now. I think I've got one right here. <clears throat> and that's in a t-shirt. That's the only t-shirt we have in, in store right now. Is the What's Up Weirdos t-shirt got the weirdos make the entire world go around on the back and the same one on the front chest but these are these are on the store right now and as summer comes in if we do more shirts shirts they will all be t-shirts for sure so another thing because we had a shirt company mess up a bunch of orders um amanda came by the new shop the other day and brought a pillow that she made she took one of our shirts that was just a misprint and uh, made a pillow out of it. So it'll be like a pillow like this. And uh, I told Amanda that if we wanna take some of those misprint shirts and make some pillows, maybe um, you can have some made by Mandy, which would be kind of cool. I know she's watching this live stream, so you're welcome to make some pillows, girl. Maybe we can use the shirts that uh, we got in the very first run that were destroyed. Use all those ones be awesome because there's a lot of what's up weirdos ones and those ones that we can use <laughs> any hoodies in the future absolutely freaking lutely there will be hoodies in the future what's happening with the small shop that is a very very good question because i am not sure so the plan was to keep the shop and then maybe split the shop with somebody else so they can take half of it and i'll take half of it so we can keep the ambo in there and you know some if I buy a quad, we're gonna need a place to put it because I can't put the big ambo in here because if we take up one bay in the new shop, it just, it wrecks, wrecks the, the flow of the new business here. So we're gonna need a place to keep the ambo. So that was the original plan. But now I have a little bit of a worrisome thing happening around here 
the people that lease the shop beside me, the bottom unit, they're talking about leaving. And I was hoping that they wouldn't be having this discussion for two or three years because I would love to take the bottom spot and make a storefront where people can come by and they can buy shirts and stickers and they can come by and buy, can browse the store and buy Wabasto heaters or whatever we've got in the storefront there. They can come in and, you know, turn on light switches and see what the lights look like and stuff like that, the off-road lights. So, but my plan was that was not supposed to happen for maybe two or three years, giving me some time to put some, put a foundation down in here but they're talking right now about leaving the shop below us here and moving down to one of the big shops down to the front of the property which means so in my lease i have the first right to refuse that shop and that was written right into my lease that if they leave i have the first right to say yes or no to it so if that happens i don't want somebody to move in down there because if i have say a company moves in and they're banging all day and we're trying to film something we're doing a podcast upstairs and all you hear is dong 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 downstairs it's going to wreck the flow that we have up here so if it comes down to it and they do leave i am going to do everything in my power to try and take over that downstairs space that means I may have to get rid of the other shop fully. As much as I don't want to, I might have to. So maybe at that point, maybe Lauren takes the new shop. I'm not sure. Maybe a couple of my friends get together and we kind of keep it in the crew. I'm not really too sure right now. All I know is I'm, that shop might be coming open and I'm scared. <laughs> scared I'm gonna have to take it over now so the other option the owner gave me is that look if you're not ready to take the space take the space and sublease it out until you're ready to take it over which is an option so if he rents it to me for a thousand bucks I sublease it out for 1500 <laughs> until I'm ready to take it cool so yeah I'm uh that was bigger than I was expecting to go out the gate but you guys should know me it's go big or go home um, I believe in this big new opportunity in a major way. I think doing this is a good next move for me. And I know a lot of YouTube channels out there don't do crazy things like this. You just see van lifers stay doing what they're doing and living the way they always live. And you can check their channel five years later. They're still doing the same thing. Me, I'm a go big or go home kind of guy. I'm a very, very ambitious person. So for me doing this crazy next step about building an overland shop doing vans is uh a hundred percent what i need and i'm happy that i'm doing this i'm super stoked it just lights up everything inside of me but i mean i also hope this experience kind of shows some people too that you can move into a van busted broke and if you save that rent money that you would have normally spent on rent and you save that for the entire duration of time that you lived in a van, because you would have had to pay that rent to somebody at some point in your life. If you drop it and then save that thousand bucks every single month or whatever you're paying for rent. For me, it was 1300 bucks at the time. And you put it in your darn bank for six and a half years. <laughs> That's a lot of money. And it's pretty beautiful on what saving rent and living in a van can do for you. So hopefully maybe my journey has kind of taught people some of that stuff that if you can just continue to work hard and save that rent money, you can start a big business if you dream of it. You know what I mean? Where back in my traditional life, doing something like this wouldn't have been an option. Because I honestly, if I would have continued to pay rent, I've been in my van six and a half years now, six and a half years of paying rent, I would still be sitting on a mountain of debt. I wouldn't be debt free. I'll tell you that for sure. A hundred percent. I love living in the van, man. I'll never stop. <clears throat> yeah, especially in today's rent prices. I feel for you guys, man. It's uh, brutal. Am I going to come back to Overland North? Probably next year, not this year. Can I make longer videos, please? <laughs> I thought my videos are too long sometimes when I hit a 20-minute video. 
Jody says, I'd love to sell my camper and buy a cool van like yours. Oh, it reminds me. I got an email from this guy. I should respond back to him, actually. I'm bad. <laughs> I responded to emails. Where is this guy? He's in here somewhere. Oh, where is he? We get so many emails, things get buried really fast. Fred. No. <laughs> I don't know where it is. It's in here somewhere. We'll have to dig it up. So I had a, a person send me a message and said that... Uh, Oh, I don't know where it is now. And said, hey, Chrome, I have a... So if you're watching, I will find your email, sir. Said that I am driving a 2017 Ford Transit. Sent me some pictures. It was tall. It was beautiful. Oh, the Sokozis just bought uh, some YouTube memberships. So the Sokozi covers, those window covers that I have, they just bought 10 YouTube memberships for people. Thank you guys so, so much. And it was gifted to an 8B, April, a Relevant Traveler, Ricky, a Margaret, K9, K9 Gar Life and Adventures. Uh, where is it here? Cynthia, Debbie Brady, Brand Visionary. My gosh, so uh, thank you guys for gifting those memberships. <laughs> That's so fun. Anyway, I lost track. I just seen that pop up over here. I'm like, <clears throat> uh, Urbex Overland says, the only reason why I don't live in my truck camper is I have a girlfriend. I hear that a lot. Believe it or not, while I'm on my travels, so many people are like, I want to do van life, but my wife said, <laughs> I've heard it the other way around too, so don't get all, all hissy about it. I've heard it the other way around too, where people are like, I want to do that, but my, but, but my husband won't let me. Panda wants to know, until what time will I be live? <laughs> <laughs> Relevant travelers said, get another girlfriend. That's a hundred percent my answer. Every time I run into someone, it's like, oh, I'd love to do that, but my wife doesn't want to let me do it, and I really, really, really want to. I'm like, well, there's an easy answer to that. <laughs> Drop the dead weight. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what time I'm gonna go live for. Usually my live streams last two hours. So and we've been live streaming right now for hey Colin. I'm just live streaming. It's all good. Do you want me to lock the gate? Yeah, I locked the gate. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll shut it. This mic's still here. Is he? Yeah. I thought he left. Huh. I've seen him walk that way. Is he here? Is his car still there? Yeah. I've seen him walk by. I thought he drove away. Yeah. Yeah. You can shut the gate. Okay. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> Cruzy's excited to have a uh, company. Yeah, he's like, ah, what are you doing? You just said that to him. <laughs> All right, man. See you later. See you in the morning. It was the guys that rent next door. Wow, man. These are flying by fast. Am I going to go... I'm going to go back to camp at Walmart and Squamish again. Probably not. Oh my gosh, more people are gifting memberships. You guys go. Iron, man, I'm missing stuff. I'm watching my screen. All the goodness is happening here. Where we got here? Iron Wolf gifted a membership that went to Sexy Flanders. <laughs> and there's another one here too. Nikki just gifted five. My gosh, you guys, just building that YouTube member family. So awesome. Nikki just gifted it and it went to Ben Hoos, Wandering Obi, uh, Penny and Penny in Kentucky, Touristique to Canada. That's so cool. 
So yeah, if you guys don't know how the memberships things work, I mean the uh, the gifting of memberships, YouTube chooses who they go to. Someone will buy them. So I think like like buying the memberships isn't cheap. Like Sokozy's bought freaking ten. I think that's like two hundred and some on dollars worth of gifts, and. Um, then YouTube chooses people who are pretty active in the comments or pretty active on my channel. And then YouTube just, just decides who they want to give it to. Oh, H. Phillips just gifted one and it was gifted to Robert Mitchell. So cool. So what that is, is they gift you a membership for one month and you, you get to go over to YouTube memberships and see what I post over there. And then if you like it, you can choose to stay as a paying member, but it's only like a one month gifted membership in hopes that you guys will stick around. That's the cool part. I'd love it if you stuck around. That'd be kind of awesome. <clears throat> yeah, man, people are so generous around here. I, I appreciate the gifts. It's fun. <laughs> and then afterwards, you get to have your own little... <clears throat> your name shows up a different color in on the live streams now you have a little thing beside you that says what's up weirdos to kind of show everybody that you're a you're a member which is pretty rad man my things are flying by on my phone Chrome, will you ever add a much needed backup camera? I actually have one in a box at my shop. It's probably been in that box for two years now. A company sent me one and I never ever ended up installing it. Maybe I should, <laughs> but I do have one though. It's um, the screen of it is actually goes on my rear view mirror and I don't use my rear view mirror so it's perfect. So when you when you're going to reverse or whatever, it shows on my rear view mirror. So maybe I'll put that on there before the summer. I'll go in there and make sure it works. I just got it from the company and never installed it. So ah, uh, uh, Sean says I was originally gifted a membership. Um, for a few months ago, what, where did I go? Then I paid for it recurring, which I just renewed yesterday. I appreciate that big time. So yeah, right now, <clears throat> right now posting on YouTube memberships and stuff is going to take a little bit of a hit. My cell phone does not, uh, take pictures anymore. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I dropped it. That's what happened. And, uh, so the back of it's all kinds of smashed but it said in here one day that, oh, I don't, I saw my foot. I can't remember the notification said. I think the notification says something like, uh, iPhone can't read the camera anymore. We think it's an aftermarket camera. I'm like, screw you. It's an original camera. So I think dropping it broke something inside of it. So until I can figure this out or get another phone, it's going to hurt for pictures over there for a while. I do have another old camera, an old phone at my shop. Uh, maybe I'll go pick that up later today and see if see if it still works. If it still works, and then at least we'll have some pictures. Because I hate not being able to take pictures. It sucks. Will I ever? Will I be able to see the solar eclipse? I'm not sure. Are you going to mount the shower in the rear box, or will you use it? Yeah, I'll probably use the box for something else. Um, I haven't really looked at that rear box scenario yet. Right now, it's been like a place where I've put in firewood when I was out in the backcountry before we busted the, the brackets that hold the bumper on. But I was using it to hold firewood and stuff while I was out there, which came in quite convenient because if I'm ever out somewhere and I chop a little bit of wood, it's nice to drag some to the next camp spot. But, um, but we will see what that turns out to be in the long term. Anytime you make an addition like that to your vehicle and have all that extra square footage added to your vehicle. It takes some time sometimes to figure out those spaces and how those spaces function good for you in the long haul. So right now it's just extra square footage that I haven't figured out yet. Would it be awesome to put the shower inside there? Heck yes it would. To be able to just open up the back door and bang it's there. 
So I think if I do mount it in there, I have to remove the shelf. So in the front of the storage box, there's a shelf in the inside. That shelf would have to come out in order for that thing to fit in there. But it's definitely an option. Then I, then, then I wouldn't be able to put firewood in there. So normally in those scenarios, I just throw the firewood in my house. Having the box allows me to keep that dirty stuff out of my home. Mm. Thought about getting a folding kayak for summer fun. I have an inflatable kayak in my rooftop carrier. It's actually in my carrier right now. We used it a few times last year and I really liked it. It's one of those things where it's got to be a nice day for it because, you know, like for me to go in a lake on a cold day, I don't want to be wet in a kayak and it's freezing outside. So that's definitely something that's summer use only for sure. Oh, Nikki, thanks for the super chat. And we got another super chat from Carolina Van Man. Shout out from Low Gap NC. Love the new shop. Super jealous. I love the new shop too. Respectfully Driven Exotics, what's up? Thanks for that. Mike Hunt, Shane, what did you guys get up to while you were there? I just made them work. And Mike, we're laying the floors. <clears throat> so Mike Hunt is gonna come help um, with putting up the kitchen cabinets and stuff. I can't really call it a kitchen. It's more like a upstairs sink and cupboards. But uh, we're laying the floors in the shop this weekend. And then once the floors are in, then you're welcome to come out, install the bathroom vanity and the, excuse me, and the uh, kitchen cabinets and stuff like that. Um, could be maybe by the end of the weekend or Monday. Maybe the end of the weekend. Anyway, Mike, just message me. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Wandering OB, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Where's our sweet cruisy bear? I don't want to poke the bear because you know what happens when I poke the bear. He gets all up in a hissy fit. There's our little cruisy bear. Passed out. Snoring away. <laughs> we gotta be quiet because you know what happens? He starts attacking me. Shh. <laughs> uh, how do you pronounce your name? Is it Lauren or Lorene? Thank you so much for that. Those new... <laughs> those new shop shower scenes are almost there just about but i did do something in the shower up there oh, i did do something in the bathroom up there that i regretted instant regret oh another super chat here from elvis stogies elvis stogies hi chrome how about a cool cool mural of cruise upstairs in the new shop that's a pretty cool idea so now that the bathroom is all painted the shower is kind of like a creamy color. So that shower was there when I got into the shop. <clears throat> I regret not tossing that one and buying a brand new one. Silly. Is that silly for me to regret that? But I kind of regret it. Because now everything's all crisp and white. And everything will be all brand spanking new. And you'll open up the shower curtain. It'll be like, <laughs> 1980s here. I regret not putting in a, a nice brand new shower. They're not that expensive to buy those little tub showers in there. I should have instead of just reusing that old piece of junk, but it's in there. Ain't no going back now. Respectfully Driven Exotics, would you, would you ever drive to Dead Horse, Alaska? Doing an Alaska trip would be damn awesome. And definitely on my list of places to travel for sure. <laughs> the 80s were cool, just not the showers. <laughs> I'll, I'll take you upstairs and show it. Well, when that time comes, I'll show it to you guys. As soon as I open up the door, you guys are going to be like, what? 
chrome that looks nasty bro maybe it'll be better once i clean it up so my thought in there was <clears throat> was because it's so crisp and white and then turns into like this nasty creamy gross color that maybe i'll do take some vinyl and do a cool writing thing on that back wall so when you walk into it it'll look super sick i know silly little things i care about but do I have new stickers? Yes, we have new stickers coming. They're actually sitting at the new shop. I just haven't taken the pictures of them yet. But yes, we have some new, really cool stickers coming. <laughs> Don't drop the soap. Could totally swap Could totally swap that shower out. I know, but we just put it in. Everything's all fancy around it. I don't... I don't... Yeah... I don't really feel like wrecking all that big, beautiful work that we did up there already. MTA, is that how you pronounce that? Thank you for that. Have you ever thought about manual folding step like an RV type step? Yes. Since the folding step didn't work. Um, yeah, we've looked at multiple different step options for the side here. Having one that folds down is a super cool idea, but I think because I still have some rust repair to do on that little section between my front and back tires on both sides. Maybe we'll do that next winter um, or the winter after that. I'm actually just going to wait to see. I'm actually just going to wait and see if. Um... Sorry, I just got an email. I was just reading the top of the email. So um, I'm just waiting to do that rust repair because I think when that goes in, I might put those little rock sliders like the little bars that run down the side there to kind of keep the side protected if i were to ever rub up against a rock and at that time i might put a step in that rock slider so i'm not going to move forward on any of that stuff until i know what i'm going to do but there is some rust repair that needs to be done maybe next winter robert shields they make special paint for showers that's an option if it's something that'll be durable, I'm cool with that. That might be kind of cool. <laughs> Somebody's got a name on YouTube that says DJ Chrome is my fave. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, why not mount the shower where the table is for the bush? So on my back of my carrier on my van, when you swing it out, there's a table mount in there. And if that table wasn't there, that's exactly where I would mount the shower. But having that little foldable table is going to come in incredibly handy out there. So I think putting the shower on the inside of that box. Hilarious name, by the way. DJ Chrome is my fave. <laughs> so good. I missed a super chat, someone just said. Where are we going here? Respectfully, is talking about the one from Respectfully Driven Exotics? I got that one. Would you would I ever drive to Dead Horse, Alaska? Yes, an Alaska trip would be incredible. I got that one. Anybody on here ever have experience with that shower paint? Does it actually work? Halifax Computer Repair says gas prices are crazy. Yeah, gas here on Vancouver Island just went to $2 per liter. So if you're in the USA, there's like 3.76 liters per gallon, something like that. I can't remember. There's just about four liters per gallon, I think. And it just changed to two bucks per liter right now. And if it goes up to $2.50 a liter, that's going to hurt summer travels, especially because my van, um, we haven't put in the final tune or anything yet, is not that great on fuel. I mean, we're hauling around a lot of extra weight with the bumpers. We got 35 inch tires and big lift and uh, a pretty heavy build in here. So we're not doing too well on the gas mileage. Sue just Sue just down the island from us here. She's probably about an hour and a half down the island, just about two hours. It's two dollars and eight cents per liter down there. Yeah, it's two dollars here. Two dollars, I think it's two dollars and nine cents. I think. 
that paint works great if you if your prep is great cool man i might i might actually do that i didn't know that was a thing i love that idea because that shower looks like garbage <laughs> like you open up the door and you're like ew <laughs> mind you it's dirty right now so maybe if a little cleanup would make it feel better Holy cow, Duncan is $2.12 a liter. Duncan's not that far down island from us here. That's insane. Yeah, doing a power step on the side is good. Marco asks, why did I put the washer and dryer upstairs? Well, it just made sense. I don't want the washer and dryer in my shop. Imagine you coming here to get a Welltech Designs lift kit put in. You don't want to stare at my washer and dryer or stare at me in my underpants while I load my washer and dryer. So we put it upstairs. It would make sense. You can, you know, like, I got some friends pop in here at the shop. They go upstairs, have a shower. They throw a load of laundry in. Just kind of made sense to have it all up there. I'm going to try that paint. Worst case scenario, if the paint ends up making it look like garbage, I'm, that's when I'm going to rip it out. Gas prices in Seattle are around $4.99 a gallon. Plug, plug your ears. Don't let your phone hear you say this because all your iPhones are going to freak out. Hey, Siri. Uh-huh. What is $4.99 USD and CAD? It's $6.76. $6.76 Canadian is what someone just wrote there for gas. I can't remember where that was. Yeah, a lot of people have saying around the same price. So that's that so the, what you're paying per gallon works out to six dollars and seventy-six cents um per gallon. Anybody know how many liters are in a gallon? I think it's three point something like that. RV Arnie, Cruzy's on the floor right now, sleeping by my feet. Oh, excuse me. Three point seven eight liters per gallon. So, so two. So you're paying four dollars and seventy. Sorry, six dollars and seventy six cents Canadian per gallon. Us up here, that would be. We'll take the gas in Duncan, BC, right now. Two dollars and twelve cents times three point seven six. I think they said. So our gas is seven dollars and ninety seven cents Canadian. So you're paying six dollars and seventy cents. Canadian. Ours is $7.97 Canadian, so it's more expensive per gallon. That's a lot of money. So if that goes up to $2.50 a liter for fuel, it's going to hurt the summer travels in a major way. You know, if I didn't embark on this big shop adventure, okay. But now because I've literally threw my whole entire savings in this big dream of mine, if gas prices hit 250, <laughs> it's gonna hurt. I better start uploading more content. Yeah, gas prices is definitely what van lifers pay for rent. And when I when I mean rent, like a lot of people always call me, Chrome, you pay rent at the shop. I also make money at the shop. Rent, I would consider when you pay for a place to sleep at night. And I stopped doing that years ago. Paying rent for me or a rent for a van lifer is fuel prices. <laughs> yeah, the chat is fast. I know some, some channels like to throw it on slow mode. I enjoy the chaos. <laughs> Someone said you can epoxy resin the showers. What's up, Andy Overland Interiors? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> There's a lot of people in here. 1,394 right now. Mm. Um, someone just asked, as you get older, any thoughts down the road about going back to sticks and bricks? No. So 
I love my lifestyle so much and I don't need a sticks and bricks when we have this place. You know what I mean? We have a stationary place right now. And I think in later years, if I ever decided to slow down on travel and focus more on business, I would still sleep in my van 100%, maybe just park it outside here and build a nice little pad. Maybe when I get super old, I, maybe that's what I do. I love the shop. I've been a car guy since I was like super young. And for me, the, the, this would be the end game. You know what I mean? Like I think if, if I had to slow down, maybe I'll park it outside the shop and put some cool stuff in here and work on some cool things. You know what I mean? Keep myself busy in my older years tinkering on stuff. Um, going back to renting, to, to paying money for a place just to sleep at night, no. I don't mind spending money on a, on a lease or a rent, if you want to call that here, um, because there's a, because you're earning money with that money, so it's not so bad. But you never know. Who knows what happens in older years? I don't see myself ever stopping van life, because if you look at most people when they retire, they ditch the sticks and bricks and go travel, or they keep the sticks and bricks and travel for six months out of the year. Um, Musky Queen asks questions. Do you ever get lonely? I need to order stickers now. I finally bought a van. Yours has to be the first sticker on since you were the one of the first people that inspired me to take the chance on van life. Musky Queen, wicked. Do I ever get lonely? No. That goes back to um, a question someone just gave me earlier, asked if I got depressed. And that loneliness and depression thing <clears throat> falls in the same category for me. Because I do super well at inspiring myself and keeping myself busy. I don't have time in my brain to focus on things that aren't productive. And that's how I roll. I've always been like just that monster amount of ambition inside of myself that if you spend time thinking about being alone or thinking about things that are depressing or things about down things about yourself, I find it's hard because I'm always so wanting to do big things with myself. So spending time not doing big things is a waste of time. You know, that's how I've always looked at it. Maybe that's my golden ticket is I keep looking at that. I'm like, oh, this is taking time away from doing something awesome. So I just don't waste my time with it. You know, I think a lot of times when some people get lonely and all those kind of things, I think they need something, something to drive towards. That's just maybe me being a super ambitious person but i've always had something to drive towards i think that's my ticket to staying happy is keeping keeping this thing very occupied with really good positive things and keep good things around you man don't don't ever have people around you that don't lift you up if they pull you down cut the dead weight peace out see you later that's it if you're not ready to fly beside me don't fly with me at all Dero, hey Chrome, what's, hey Chrome, love what's going, oh my God, why can't I read today? Love, hey Chrome, love what you're doing. So how much is your van weighing after all the upgrades? I have not weighed it yet. I should weigh it, but I haven't put it on the scale yet since, uh, so I, I knew what it weighed before. I think it was 80, 8,300 pounds beforehand, I think. I don't know what it is right now. I'm not sure. Jennifer West Lloyd. Thank you. No negativity. You got that right. Holy cow, you freaking giving, loving people. Van Heaven... Oh, that's, is that Van, no, it's Van Haven. Van Haven just gifted 10 <laughs> more YouTube memberships. 10! <sighs> My YouTube members is going to be like through the roof. So that was given to Sandra, Alita, Brandy, Darlene, Marco, Sterling Holmes, Whiplash Pants, good name, Van Hutnut. Is that it? <laughs> so freaking cool. 
Oh, guys, my memberships is just whoo, on the rise. So good. Uh, Nomad SUV Life says, you're a big part of my life, Chrome. You, that means a lot to me. Because honestly, you guys are a huge part of who I am. A guy told you guys in a video the other day that I feel bad when I don't upload. <laughs> I do. Like, I've been skipping videos left, right, and center on this channel because of the new shop. I, uh, sometimes I just, I don't feel like sharing another video of building the shop out, you know? Like, I just... I feel bad not sharing, but I also feel bad dragging you guys through all that stuff. But I know some of you guys have been enjoying it, but I don't want to do it every single day. So there will be some videos being skipped over the next little bit here. But there will be a video tomorrow, I hope. We started one today. <laughs> I don't know how good it's going to be, but we definitely did start one today. Bart Borg. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Thank you so much for that. That's insanely awesome, bro. Tried to give 20 memberships, but it wouldn't let me. So take this instead. Bart, you're a freaking rock star. So Bart, I had a chance to meet. He was helping me with uh, some of the engine stuff. So he has the same, same engine in mine. And Bart actually did the very same engine conversion that I did in my van three months or something like that before I did it. And uh, we had the chance to meet up as this engine project was wrapping up. But yeah, he went through all the same things that we did. So we got to learn a lot about it towards the end. I wish we would have combined at the very, very beginning. Because um, he would have guided us quite nicely through it. So Bart, thank you so much for the love. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Bra, what? Just said, Mark, can I have uh, Bart, can I have some? <clears throat> Prepper Rig asked me, did I decide on the outlets? We are doing all black. <laughs> Sorry, I lied. We're doing all white. And my brain had a malfunction. Doing all white on the plugs. I just thought the white might break up the black a little bit. Kind of keep things nice and crisp. <clears throat> how's the back chrome it's doing actually pretty darn good man pretty good so yeah so like that's the, that's the thing about going black on those covers the black covers for the light switches and all the plugs and stuff like that is a shiny black and it wasn't what i was looking for upstairs if it was the same texture as the wall, maybe, but I didn't want to paint them because if you paint them, then you're worried about if you you miss hitting the plug and you scratch the paint off and then you got all that mess. Nah, so we're going to do all white. Uh, Terry said, can you explain the difference between Patreon and YouTube memberships? We've been a patron for years. Thank you for that. Um, there is not much of a difference. Patreon and YouTube members get the same pictures, the same posts, the same everything. So when I post on YouTube memberships, I literally copy that, paste it onto Patreon, put the same pictures on it, you get the same thing. But YouTube is unfolding so many new features on YouTube members that I'm shutting down my Patreon as of December 31st at the end of this year. It's gone. So, yeah. We're going to move everything over to YouTube memberships because it's just getting flipping awesome over there. And I'm excited to start using some of the new features. Now that it's getting bigger, if more of those people stick around as reoccurring members, we'll start doing more live streams and stuff just for them. And uh, it's kind of fun. Like they do. I know my, I know my YouTube channel would hate this, but I can do a live stream that's public to everybody. But the only people that can talk are my members. So I was thinking that doing things like that could be fun if I do a topic-based live stream where we discuss one subject. And then um, it keeps the comments quieter and keeps it to just focused on that topic of the video. I figured that might be nice once every once in a while to just do a member-only live stream, but publicly YouTube can watch it. You won't see the outlets that much anyway. You're, that's right. So a majority of the things on the walls will actually be covered by 
what will be covering the outlets. So a lot of them will be underneath tables, etc. So it doesn't really make a difference that way. Mary Jensen, how would you cook while living in a car looking to purchase a van in the near future? If you're talking about living in like a car, like an SUV, if that's what you're asking, obviously be really careful when you're using an open flame in a space like that. You know, maybe cook things on a lower flame instead of cranking that baby right up. Because <coughs> at that point, you're pretty close to the roof. But I know people that 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 do car stuff a lot, they end up cooking a lot outside. Like I noticed those guys will go to a park and cruises got to go outside. I think a lot of those guys, I, I see them, they, they end up going to like a community park during the day, taking all their cooked stuff to a picnic table and cooking outdoors that way. Um, Jay says an induction cooktop. You need a ton of power in order to run an induction cooktop. Cooking with that kind of electricity is no joke. Like if you want to do an induction cooktop, you better be running a pretty big electrical system in your vehicle because an induction cooktop pulls between 900 and 18 or 2000 watts on high so depending on where you run it that would suck the batteries out of my van like that if i had an induction cooktop so imagine that you want to cook dinner it's pulling 1500 watts for 20 minutes that's huge But, you know, all depends on, on how much you cook. But induction cooktops are great, though. 100% great. But you're going to need good, you're gonna need some batteries in your van to back that up. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to be doing that with a 100 amp hour battery. You, you'll be needing to charge up so many times. You know, it's okay if you're parked somewhere where there's tons of sunshine, you got lots of solar, and you can top up all day long. Sure, great. Yeah, I, I run propane in a bottle and I don't mind. I have friends of mine that, that won't put propane in their van because it is kind of dangerous that would rather do inductions. I have like like Lauren, Lauren's straight induction cooktop. Lauren's also got like 400 amp hours or 600 amp hours of power or whatever he's got. There's a lot of power to back that up. Willie's, I was cooking in a park in January. <laughs> Burr. <laughs> Van Haven, my name is Van and I live in my car for years. I've been following you for years, but I don't talk much. You've inspired me to record my own car dwelling. So thanks for thanks so much for what you do. How about graffiti art on the blank walls upstairs? We actually thought about doing some graffiti art upstairs. I just, I think because I have such a design feature up there, I think I would have to plan that out with the artist first and kind of come up with an, an idea, but that would be really, really, really cool. I may be doing, maybe doing graffiti on the walls going to the upstairs. That'd be pretty sick. That'd be pretty awesome. But Van Haven, thank you so much for all the love today. I appreciate it. Roses and thorns. Yeah, I want to hear a little bit of DJing. So that stuff's hard to do on YouTube. I can't do it on my channel because of um i'll get nailed for copyright on every track that i play so you're not allowed to play music that belongs to other people on a monetized channel so i could do like if i created a maybe another maybe if i created a dj chrome channel and i didn't monetize it i could run those run those things no problem but uh yeah Urbex Overland, you are pretty much family at this point, bro. Since I've been around for so long, my actual name is Matt, and I'm from Bend, and I'm from Bend, Oregon. I heard Bend, Oregon's got quite the van gathering. Nice to put a name to it, bro. Cody Cortez, store cam twenty four seven, store cam twenty four seven, when the place opens. That's a pretty flippin' cool idea. That's a pretty cool idea. Oh, I think Cruzy wants to go outside. So, 
Running like a store cam, you guys can just click online and see what's going down all the time is actually pretty sweet. But on that note, I actually plan on running a lot more live streams in the shop here because we have such good internet inside the shop space that um, if we have big project days, I might just be able to run the camera all day and you guys can pop in and out all day long and kind of see what's going on in the shop. Figured that might be kind of fun for for everybody just like just imagine that engine build project where me and lauren were working in the van all day and you guys had a direct feed watching that whole thing you could pop in and out anytime you wanted would be really fun and i'd like to do some of that stuff here more often now that we have the space cruise has got to go outside um dj chrome is my fave i miss seeing you with beer slash treats for cruisy um i had a beer yesterday I've actually had two beers this week because I've eased up on the drinking. I've gone out for dinner two times in the last week and had a beer with each dinner. It was so freaking good. And the beer was called Soulmate. The first time I drank it, I thought it was my soulmate. Hold on it. We're gonna go take Cruzy outside. No, oh, Cruzy, oh, I'm coming. Oh, Cruzy, we're coming. Ugh. We're coming, bro. Ready? Hold on. I'll help you out. Ugh. There you go, buddy. Go pee. Go pee, bro. <laughs> oh, cruisy bear. Off to go take a pee somewhere. Uh, yeah, Shane's in the comments here. Shane's like, that beer was really good. It was freaking delicious. We're in the shop. That's why my feet is so good. It's so clear in here, right? This image is like, I think my Wi-Fi is like, I think it uploads at like 200 megabits. It's fast. Is Cruz's channel monetized? Um, I, I think his channel has probably lost the monetization now because uh, I don't upload on his channel anymore, so I don't think it's monetized anymore. It used to be. <clears throat> so I think in order to be monetized, go follow it, Cruz the Bulldog. You need to upload, I think, so many videos in, in a year in order to keep the monetization, and it still needs to have viewers and stuff like that going on, but nobody's... I haven't uploaded on Cruise the Bulldog's channel in over a year. It's Cruise the Bulldog if you want to go check it out. And if you watch Cruise's channel, go back to when I first uploaded and he was this big. He was so freaking cute. Did I get my power back on in the shop yet? Yes, we did. Just do shorts for his channel. I thought about doing that, but the problem is sometimes is I always keep forgetting to run the camera on Cruise. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna go check where Cruz is. Give me a sec. Hey, come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, Cruz. He's just up there pissing on everything. <laughs> Ooh, what's this button? Highlight saved to your channel. What? At least one minute of the video is needed to start. What is this button? I'm pushing buttons. What's this? At least one minute of your video is needed to start a highlight. Huh. There's so many new features in this, in this, uh, in the live stream app. It's pretty cool. Oh, guys, don't talk about food. I'm hungry. What program do I use to edit my videos? I edit my videos in Adobe Premiere. Any future mods to my van? So maybe. <laughs> I just finished doing a ton of mods. Hey, come on, let's go. So the only other mod, come on man, I just put all this stuff on here. The only other mod I think that will end up doing is because there's so much rust repair that needs to be done so all this stuff down here needs to be cut out from the front tire to the back tire. Um, I'm not doing that 
probably not this winter unless it really starts to come through. Maybe next year or the year after. I'm going to wait a couple more years. Then I'd like to put... Let me turn the camera on, guys. Then I'd like to put, like, that big, like a tube thing, like a, a rock slider or a side step on here all the way around just to protect any of this stuff from, from being hit by a rock and also to give us a, a little place to step up here before we get inside. You know what I mean? But that's it. I honestly don't want to do anything more to this van. She done. Cruz? Where'd he go? <laughs> we lost the dog. Let's see if this live stream will go out here. I don't think it will. I know we get internet behind the shop, but not beside it here. Cruz? Hey. What are you doing? Come on, get inside. Come on, inside. <laughs> he knows he's in trouble. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, get inside. <laughs> what a guy. Come on, buddy. Hey, come on, let's go inside. Come on, buddy, up, up. Come on, up, up. All right, this is how we put Cruzy in. For so many people are like, you need to get, you need to get a ramp for cruise. This is how it goes down. Come on, up, up. He's like, you know, I don't have any gonads, Dad. You took my little, my little hangers up. I did, buddy. I cut your balls off, bro. I sorry. <laughs> I sorry. Um, you guys want to go upstairs and see something cool? I was gonna save it for tomorrow's video because it's in tomorrow's video. You guys want to go upstairs and see something cool? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go upstairs. So here we have lights, not quite done yet, but we got, we got lights in the hallway. And I love it that we can just walk around here and we got good internet. The internet box is not upstairs here right now. It's, we, uh, hopefully it doesn't cut you out. That wire that's hanging right there is where the internet box is supposed to be. We haven't hung it back up yet. But all the lights are in, so check them out. They have a black ring and they're frosted. You guys want to see something really cool? We have power. Check this out. Boom. How freaking beautiful is that? <laughs> Looks freaking amazing in here. You know, and like, I know so many people like, don't do the black. It's not going to be bright enough. We have 36 pot lights in here. It is ridiculously bright. But the black looks really, really, really good in here. Like, it just adds a, the black and the whites just, just pops. <laughs> so good. So yeah, tomorrow... We're going to start working on the floor, making sure it's all level. Here is the, the floorboards that are going on here. It's kind of a, kind of a grayish color. It's, it's nice. I think it'll look good, look good against the wall. Yeah, pretty sweet. Let's go show you guys the nasty shower. So the doors here will be painted a same super bright white, they're not gonna be the yellow, but this is nasty. Okay, the bathroom, let's put a light in here. These work. 
No, these aren't even plugged in. Hold on. It doesn't need to be plugged into here, but we're gonna use this anyway. 9%. Let's go. Okay. Lights, lights, lights. Ugh. Okay, that bathroom is super bright white. Things freaking nasty. Like, I mean, obviously we gotta get off all this overspray, but it's, uh, I mean, it'll be clean. Just it's kind of freaking gross, don't you think? Oh gosh, someone just said paint it black. Oh, that would be super sick. Imagine that. I don't know if there's enough light here to light up the inside there, but painting a black shower will be freaking incredible. So Mandy just asked, can the, can the shower be coated? Yeah, somebody, um, somebody said in the comments, you can actually buy a shower paint. And I'd be down for that. But yeah, Mandy, if you just got on here, I said earlier that this was an instant regret. Once we pulled all the tape off, I instantly regretted not buying a brand new shower. I was thinking, hey, let's just, you know, keep the budget down in here and just recycle what we can. But then when I seen how beautiful all that is, and then you come in here and it's like, budget. <laughs> Chrome, why did you cheap out on the shower? Come on, it's like, Everything in here is crisp and pretty, and in here it looks like like a really bad truck stop shower. You open the curtain, you just shut it, you're like, yep, not showering here, uh-uh, no way. <laughs> regrets, definite regrets. But it's crisp in here, isn't it? Look at that light. Hold on, adjust my camera a bit. So for filming in here, the light is actually really, really good. I like it. Hey, okay. how's the internet feed? Okay, we're not, we're not getting, getting a uh, glitchy. Could we have no Wi-Fi box up here? <laughs> so yeah. Okay, guys. Let's shut this door. Yeah, I was pretty stoked to have uh, all those lights put in here. I think that looks incredible. And yeah, maybe uh, maybe that comment earlier about doing graffiti up here. Yeah, right now I think it's pretty slick. I, uh, we're probably gonna do something like a logo or something on that wall. Some kind of a logo. I mean, I'm not sure if we do the Van Toys logo or if we write something super inspirational along, along that wall in black. Oh guys, this space up here is gonna be wild. And wait till you see the downstairs space. Imagine all this with all the color and then you open up this door and the downstairs space is painted with all that color. Come on. Once all that's painted, black, gray to there, white and a black on the ceiling. Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens when you stop paying rent for six and a half years. You can afford to build dreams. And this one's turning out to be quite nice. Those definitely will be painted white, don't worry. That looks like, <laughs> those look as bad as the shower does. <laughs> And in here, there won't be switches like this. We're doing dimmers. So the shop has, the upstairs space has three zones. These ones this way is zone one, then it splits this way, zone two and zone three. And we're gonna run everything on a dimmer. And I did them in split zones because just say, you know, maybe we're only working in this section and we don't need to light up the rest of the shop, then we can technically only need to just turn those ones on. Um, and or whatever. 
but we're gonna put dimmers on them because it's actually quite bright in here. Looks good though. I am very, very happy. It's looking slick. I'm not sure what I'm doing with the, uh, with the stairs yet. So the stairs will be painted. Yeah, stairs will be painted. And then we'll probably put like a black tread piece up here. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. Still to come. And I thought I got a delivery here today, but I don't know where it is. Did I leave it outside? I wonder if it's in the unit next door. Huh. Yeah, it says I got an Amazon delivery today, but it's not here. Where'd it go? Okay, back inside. <laughs> Hi, Cruzy. Crazy up there, right? So beautiful. All right, see if I missed anything. DJ Chrome is my fave, says help for you to make or order food on the live. The only problem with ordering food, I don't have anything here to make. Um, my fridge is pretty sparse right now. And I can't order food here because if I do, I have to go all the way down to the yard and open up the gate for the delivery driver. Good idea though. It's making me hungry, you just saying that. <laughs> I miss any more? So good, you guys. I appreciate all the love, man. It means a lot to me. It really does. Because I we, we find over the years, and, th and this goes across the board with every YouTube channel. Um, it's hard to make changes on your channel because it affects everyone. And I, I know a lot of channels that, that hide what they do with their real life. I hate to say it that way. You know, channels that only upload one, two days a week. There's a chance that there's a big chunk of the world that you don't see on YouTube. I can't do that because my whole life is on here. You know me, I prefer to do everyday videos. Lately, I haven't been, but... Oh, I thought Cruzy was getting sick over there. Is my parcel at the gate? No, it said it came here earlier. Sorry, I was going there with something and I got sidetracked. One sec. Oh, my brain. No, oh, it hasn't been shipped. It never arrived. Still says out for delivery. <laughs> You're not coming here now, man. The gate's locked, guys. Sorry! Yeah, so I ordered these from Amazon today. Those. I don't know if that's showing up okay or not. But that's um for the stairs. They just clip on the front of the stairs. You glue them down or you put double-sided tape on them. Yeah, a little, little... They're like rubber, but they have like a little checker plate look to it. I, um... I ordered them because I need something grippy on the top of those stairs for Cruzy. Because if Cruz is going down those stairs and it's just regular wood, there's a chance that Cruz might slide off of it. Someone in uh, the comments gave me an idea um, to just paint it and then sprinkle sand or like a crushed walnut shell or whatever it is, a crushed something on top of it, just so it creates some grip. That's definitely an option for sure. But then I came across these and I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot. Oh well tech designs, what's up guys? Thanks for being on the stream. Greetings from San Diego. Oh, nice to have you guys on the stream. Appreciate that. You guys know I'm big fans of Welltech Designs. Half my van is a Welltech. I'm a screaming advertisement. I got Welltech Designs on the front bumper. I got Welltech Designs on the back bumper. I got Welltech Designs underneath this whole rig. My suspension, front and back. The method wheels that I have on here, they even sell those things. <laughs> yeah, big fan. Big fans.
Oh yeah, guys, if you didn't see it, um, I, a lot of people watched it from the last scene. Well Tech Designs did a podcast with me. Um, Jeremy did, and it's called Jeremy's World 10, I believe it is. That's the name of his channel. And they did a podcast. It was actually freaking amazing. I really enjoyed it. So if you guys want to get a little story time about Chrome's past, that is a beautiful place to go. So um, Jeremy, if you're in the live stream right now, drop the link to the to the podcast. That'd be awesome. Or somebody, if somebody's on my channel, you guys want to drop the link to, to the podcast, that'd be pretty cool. Phil Lully, can't wait to see the business. Well, can't wait to see the business happening in the new shop. Me too. I'm super excited. Uh, Panda Life, does WellTech Design sponsor me? No, they do not pay me for a damn thing. I'm a huge fan of their product. No, I'm not sponsored by them. Which means everything that comes out of my mouth about that product is from the heart and the dead truth. Don't get me wrong, I would never take a sponsor and lie to you guys. That's not a thing. I'm not going to pull a product from somebody just for the sake of like making cash from it and feed you guys a bunch of bullshit. Um, but no, WellTech doesn't sponsor me. Where do my comments go? There they are. <laughs> oh, finish the story. Boom, I see how my brain's jumping over. Finish the story about the 2017 transit. So I had somebody reach out to me and said, Hey, Chrome, I have a 2017 Ford Transit van and it just doesn't get me to the places that I want to go. I keep watching your adventures. And so I guess they, they travel, they're from the States. They travel through Canada every year. They go up to Alaska all the time. And they say this, I think they said they've done three trips in the transit van and it just doesn't get them to the places they want to go. And that's not all to do with suspension either. So it doesn't get them to the places that they go because it's too big and it's too tall and it just doesn't get him down the trails and into the remote areas that he wants to take his rig. So he reached out to me and said, hey, Chrome, I would love to maybe talk about doing a Ford Econoline van with you guys, something that's a bit more rugged and trail ready. So when you're dealing with a, a transit van, I mean, WellTech Designs makes makes a pretty, pretty awesome suspension kit for the, for the transit. But then you have the other side of that one. You've got the other side when you're dealing with a rig that's super tall and super pretty that you don't want to be like rah, dragging branches down. Um, there's that other aspect to it. That and if you have the extended one, you have a super large back end, which is not good in the backcountry at all. Like imagine that rental camper van that I took out. Imagine that thing in the bush. I would destroy it and I wouldn't get anywhere. So they're having a problem getting farther out into the bigger remote areas. And I think that happens for a lot of people. Like you may start playing around in the back country a little bit, but then after a while, you just want to get super remote and the size of your vehicle can hinder that hugely. Like my, my big ambulance that I have in my shop, that will hinder me from getting into some of those really overgrown remote areas. Cause sometimes you gotta go through really grown over trails to get out to some of those remote lakes that nobody's ever been to. And if you're out there in something super tall, you have the trees that have grown over the trail and you just can't get down them. But in a, in, a, in a van like mine, you can full shove it through those things, no problem. So anyway, they reached out and said, hey, Chrome, I'm interested on maybe, maybe once the shop is up and running that you guys do a, a full Ford Econoline van for me with a four by four conversion and all that kind of stuff, which, which I was pretty stoked at. And it was a cool story to read that, um, because I, uh, I was I was excited about it because I know that'll make a good story for you guys if the time comes and we can ever film a transformation like that from somebody who went from from a stand-up transit van into something a bit more trail ready, you know. But if you are in a transit, um, WellTech makes a rad kit for the transit vans. I've never driven one or seen one in person, but they do they do make a kit for it for sure. Oh. I'm reading my phone. Apparently I'm missing some questions. Chrome, Chrome, Chrome. Jennifer has a question. Let me back up and find a Jennifer. Oh, everybody's yelling at me. I've been reading them on my phone, so I don't, I don't see all the questions. 
All right, where's Jennifer's question? Oh, Jennifer. Sorry, Jennifer. Thank you. After shop is ready, can us people use your use your shop? No. So are you talking about like coming in here and doing work on your own vehicle inside of my shop? Like you renting it for space? Um, no. So I'd have to look into the insurance reasons for that. But I mean, like that could be something we could possibly offer in the future is having a DIY space. Um, yeah, that, like, we have to look at the insurance things for doing that. You know what I mean? On what's it like on the insurance side for having somebody else do work inside of here. But it is possible. It is very well possible that maybe this one bay here becomes the DIY space. I'm open to all sorts of opportunities. We have a lot of space in here. So the far end will be a pull-in drivable bay and also my bay. And bay number two will be the... Um, the four post hoist that will be where probably all the suspension work and obviously the hoist bay for anything that we need to do on vehicles will be that one this bay was originally supposed to be um product storage and where the forklift lives and the shop vehicle lives but if they do leave next door we will have all that next door space, which means what goes in this bay could possibly go down there, opening up this bay to maybe be a an open bay for DIY stuff. It's possible. I mean, we've got all the tools here. It might be a good space for someone could rent it out for a day or a week and come in here and work on their vehicle. That's I'd, I'd be open to that. Thanks for bringing that up. Oh, she means USA? No, she doesn't. After the shop is ready, can you us people use your shop? That wouldn't be us USA people use your shop. <laughs> oh, you're talking about my online store? Is that what you're talking about? If you're talking about my online store, yes. Everybody's typing in USA, USA. So yeah, my vantoys.com store will be both Canada and USA. Not all products will be available to, to sell in the USA, but on the flip side, there will also be products that won't be available to sell in Canada that will only be available in the USA. So depending on what depends on which brands that, that we put together on the store, Right now, I have brands that I'm only allowed to sell in Canada, and I also have brands that I'm only allowed to sell in the USA and not in Canada, if that's what you mean. She means, hold on, guys. I haven't been reading the good. She means, can she come from the USA? Heck yeah, you can come from the USA. Absolutely. freaking -lutely. Customers can come from absolutely anywhere. So if you want to drive up here from the USA, we, we're actually a ferry ride out of Seattle, not that far. I think that's where the ferry comes from or Tacoma, something like that, somewhere around there. Yeah, you can absolutely come here. Absolutely. Yeah, the shop's not like the actual physical shop is just not open to Canadians. You can definitely come up here with your rig from the USA and get work done. 100%. Everybody's like road trip. So yeah, once the, like if we do happen to put a storefront up here, absolutely, the storefront will be open for people to come by and like it, it's gonna take a while to put the storefront to use, but if it does happen to be a thing, then people can come by here and um, you know don't come by to visit because we got a business to run, but you can definitely come by here and if we're definitely around, we'll come say hi for sure. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, I'm reading them on my phone because it seems more nice of me to stare at my camera instead of staring over here but i'm missing a lot of comments am i planning to come to the east coast this summer no i am probably going north this summer that's funny that that question spun three pretty good answers <laughs> it answered a lot of questions even though i answered two of them wrong am i sponsored by timmy's no but that's what happens with YouTubers. Like, I can sit here and drink with this bottle of water and they get free advertising. <laughs> you know? 
Oh, my phone's blown up. She me. This is Patty Crane. Just text me. No, she wants to know if you guys will do some work on her van. And then Amanda just messaged me. Us means United States people. She means get to do. Yeah. So I already answered that. So 100%. You're welcome to come up here from the USA. So like that guy with the transit van I was just telling you about. He's from the USA. He wants us to um, possibly build a van for him, which is quite beautiful. And if you're watching there, uh, sir, sorry, I didn't respond to your email. Um, I will after this live stream for sure. North as in Alaska. No, we are probably just doing the Yukon this year because my daughter's graduation is in July, June, end of June. So depending on when I leave here, it depends on how my summer travels are going to go. So if I don't get out of here till May 15th, then we'll probably do a short trip and then come back for my daughter's graduation and then full send it. Um, but yeah, we're probably just going to do the Yukon this year. After the shop is done, am I going to do everyday uploads? I want to do everyday uploads right now. I do. But I don't know how it's going to affect the channel if I do shop, 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 shop. And just me wake up in my van, go put floors in, go back to my van. How that's going to function every single day. I don't want to hurt my channel because I'm making changes in my personal life. You know, I, it's fun to do update videos where you guys get to see some cool progress. But I don't know about doing the every days. I'm just scared about, you know, changing too much. Does that make sense? Someone just said blah, taxes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going through taxes right now. It sucks. Where's my shop, by the way? It's on Vancouver Island. Question, question, question. When am I coming to the USA? That used to be one of my biggest questions on my channel. Um, one day soon. I think once the new shop is up and running and we start going to some of those bigger overland rallies down there, that may be the time. Um, yeah, I, the only reason why I just haven't felt is just a, one of the big reasons is I just don't feel like it. Canada's epic. And we, we keep ourselves pretty busy here. So I only get six months to travel. And right now, while Canada's screaming at me, I'm going to stick around here. Is there another breed of dog you would live with? Huh, that's a good question. I just love the bulldog. I think a French bulldog is pretty cute. Like one of the big bulky ones. Not the skinny little guys, the big bulky French bulldogs. Yeah, I don't know. I like the bulldog breed. I think the English bulldogs, they're just very, very, very sweet, loving dogs. And I really like their characters. I have, I have a huge heart for bulldogs. I'm not sure if I'd ever own another one. I'm good. I mean, if Cruzy, if something ever happens to Cruzy, I definitely get another bulldog for sure. Shh, don't tell him. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I love the bulldog breed. I always have. Uh, someone's asking about Jeffy Bear. Have I ever tried rubber gym mats for your knees? Yeah, it's a good idea. Doing the rubber gym mats in my van. But I mean, right now, these, these anti-fatigue mats, they work out quite well. I'm actually quite happy with them. But those rubber gym mats would be a pretty good idea. I just like these ones because they're really, really soft. Hi, Terra's Boutique. Do I ever use a generator? No, I don't even own a generator. So a generator is a good idea. I don't know because I travel so much and drive around a lot. I don't know if I'd be useful, but there has been times on my travels where I've been sitting for too long doing a lot of video editing and I drained my batteries. And if I don't force myself to drive the next day, I have no juice to, to do anything else in the van. 
That doesn't happen very often. Now that I've upgraded to 400 amp hours, I have 400 amp hours of SOK batteries in my van. Now that we upgraded to those, I haven't had a battery problem. <laughs> it's a lot. That's a lot of stored energy. But a generator works good in those emergency scenarios for sure when your battery capacity is running low. I just don't like when people run generators while you're trying to sleep. It just, it gets obnoxious. So would I put a generator in the ambulance? Yes, I absolutely would. I'd carry a Honda 1000 in here maybe, but the amount of times it would be used would be pretty, pretty slim. So it's, it's hard to carry around something like that. Plus the extra gas tank and stuff like that you would take to run the generator for the amount of times I would use it. I'm not sure. Peppa and Pearl says, see you on the road. Vancouver Island is beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice over here. What about working on a bus? There's a really awesome bus for sale on this island right now. And if you didn't want so much for it, I might have bought it when my van broke down. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so freaking cool. I think, uh, I think the right bus jacked up with a 4x4 conversion is super sick. Uh, someone said, I do have a generator. It's called my engine. That's right. Because I drive around so much, we just generate our own electricity via driving. I use my Honda in the winter to top up my 200 amp hours of lithium. Yeah, it's great in the winter time. Those are times of the year that you really, you really think about adding a, adding a, a generator. <laughs> Sorry, guys. My bad. Um, someone just said Jackery generator. Jackery is not a generator. Jackery is a is a battery. The only way it generates electricity is if you plug it into your cigarette lighter or you throw out the solar panels. We're talking about generators, something that you can just turn on on a rainy winter day. And uh, well, I guess some places don't rain in the winter <laughs> on a rainy, cloudy day and charge up your batteries. You can't do that with a Jackery. Jackery is mainly a, a, a power system to run things and to store energy from somewhere. And you need to get that energy from somewhere. Chrome, what's your favorite band or what's your favorite movie? I don't know about favorite movie and I don't have a favorite band. I'm not really into rock stuff, but if you're going to go favorite artist right now would be EDX. It's beautiful. It's just a DJ slash producer. Incredible music. E D X. Check it. Pretty dope. Um, but yeah, my, my musical taste varies. Like I'll go from one side of the spectrum to the other. Um, but I'm not really, uh, a band kind of guy. I'm more of a, an electronic music kind of guy. <coughs> don't get me wrong. If I'm in the backcountry, my go-to is Motley Crue, Girls, Girls, Girls at full crank. I don't know why. I just, I just attach myself to that track. That's my go-to when I'm bombing a good day in the bush. Um, respectfully Driven Exotics. De detailing bay with van life products and pressure washing probably won't be doing that in my shop so the owner of the property here is planning on building another row of shops on the other side and he had mentioned at one point he had pondered on putting like a car wash bay at the end like more like an outside pressure wash bay for us to just go down and wash our vehicles just in case someone got one of these bays use it as a man cave um which i thought was a pretty cool idea Maybe down at the bottom one, having a place to, to, to wash vehicles and stuff. I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Cruzy, what's your problem, bro? Cruzy's in a huff. What? Sitting by your food bowl, you, you trying to tell me something? I'm hungry too, buddy. We all can't eat all the time. <laughs> What? He's gonna attack me. 
What? Oh, what? I'm hungry too, buddy. I'm hungry too. You want some treats? Okay, buddy. It's all I can do for you right now, buddy. We're on we're on a live stream, bro. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, bro. No! Oh, watch my finger, buddy. Movie. That's it. That's it, bro. That's it. <laughs> I don't have any more, bro. There's no, I have nothing, bro. He's like, I know there's food in that hand. There's no food. He's like, are you sure? Are you sure there's nothing in there? He's so deprived. Life is so rough, hey, bro? Dad never feeds you. Hey? You're just starving. You clearly look like you're malnourished. Hey? You haven't had food in weeks. Want some food? I guess I said the word now, I gotta do it, huh? <laughs> okay, guys, one sec. Oh, I just wiped crazy snot on my face. It's like slobber. Okay. Sorry I made you look at my butt. I'm crazy, I'm coming. I gotta crawl underneath my desk every time. Taking a pee break. So I used to have, uh, I don't know if you guys remember that video where I showed you guys I bought a new pea jug, two big black ones. I ended up not liking them at all. They, uh, they're just too hard to hold. Like I thought maybe nice, big capacity, great. But then you try to hold it when you're peeing, it was like <laughs> so close to dropping it more than once. So I ended up getting rid of them. 
and buying three of these, and they're perfect. They're the same size as the other ones I had. I just made more room in there so I could now carry three of them with me. I know, fascinating topic. There you go, bud. You done? Dude, it's dripping off your chin, bro. Sorry. This <laughs> is taking a while. Because I put a lot of water into his raw food, I uh, I gotta wipe his chin or it just drips everywhere. He's noisy. Nice and clean. That's it. Done dealio, bro. Hey, Hope. What'd I miss? What'd I miss? Jeremy Fawson, did you upgrade your alternator? What DC to DC charger do you use? I remember their Victron. I can't remember what size. So I didn't upgrade my alternator. The alternator in this van is the same one that comes factory. And it was like that when I had the 4.6 liter engine in here. And it's the same now that I have the 5.4. So I have the factory engine that would a factory alternator that would normally be used with this engine. Nothing was upgraded from that point. And it seems to have done me fine before and it does me fine now. And for my DC to DC charge controllers, I'm running two Victron 30 amp charge controllers giving me 60 amps of charge from the alternator once it's pulling back. Do I know the name of them? I don't think so. I don't know if, I don't know if my Victron will pull it up on here. I'm not sure if it shows up on mine or if we just have it called. Let me flip this over so you guys can see. It's probably out of focus. There's my Victron system. It'll show you everything. It's called the Orion. So the Victron... 30 amp Orions. I, it's not even in focus, is it? No. So I have two 30 amp Orion DC to DC charge controllers. And I really like them. A lot. I, uh, I used to have all Renogy in my van. Um, I got it when I first started. But when we did the big battery upgrade the other year, we upgraded all the electronics to Victron Energy. Run it all through the Victron battery monitor so I can see the entire system. But I like the Victron for this reason. So it shows me my 130 amp DC to DC charge controller and my second one. So I know if they're on or if they're off. Then in here, it <coughs> excuse me. It shows me my solar Victron solar charge controller. So I can also see how many watts that charge controller is coming in from right here. And it has my Victron battery shunt. So when I click on that, it shows me my entire system as an overall view. What my battery voltage is, my current, um, my current current that's being pulled or added to the system, um, how much power that I've used, and like it shows me like the consumption of amp hours. So right now, um, my I've only gone through 18.4 amp hours from being 
full. So since I've stopped here, because I stopped here and it was full, I've only pulled 18.4 amp hours. And currently right now with the amount of power that I'm drawing, my batteries will last me one day and 13 hours at my current power draw. So right now I'm pulling a total of 106 watts off my system. My fridge is running right now. All my lights are running right now, pulling a total of 100 watts, which is technically in a van, a lot of power. So if you think about that, I have 400 amp hours of power. It will run for one day and 13 hours. That's not very long if you look at it in the scheme of things, but you're also not running this 24 hours a day though. These things will be shut off after the live stream, changing that number. But if you were to pull 100 watts all the time, 400 amp hours isn't a lot of power if you're pulling a lot of power. Hope that answered your question. Does anybody know what Chrome did to his finger? I cut my finger today. What did I do? <laughs> I ran a razor blade through it. And it was freaking deep. I actually, so I was trying to cut a wire today and you coming up, come on. <laughs> I was trying to cut a wire today and uh, I heard you burp, buddy. And uh, as I'm splitting the wire, like I pulled it, I pulled the blade and it was getting hard to go through the wire and it, like I wasn't cutting the wire sideways. I was cutting like the plastic off the wire. So the wire was running lengthwise and I'm splitting it down here and it got hard to cut and I pulled at it. My finger was right there and that brand new blade went right over my finger from here to here. So freaking deep that it opened up about that far and you could see all the meat in the middle. I know, gross topic, but uh, yeah, so I pushed it together and about 10 minutes later, I let it go and it just opened wide open. I'm like, God damn it. So I'm holding it and I was gonna drive and go get some stitches. But by the time I got maybe 15 minutes up the road and got into where the, to where the, the hospital is, I let it go and it stayed. So I just taped it. It's good to go. I cut it because I'm an idiot. You can't give me anything sharp. I will cut. <laughs> Not on purpose. I just do that. Like if I'm like, you always know when I'm working, if I have cuts on my hand. Like right there, things just happen. You give me a tool, I will nick myself at some point. I don't care what it could be a screwdriver. I'll be doing something, bam, a screwdriver will go up my, on my hand or something. I'm, I shouldn't use tools. I only do that sometimes when it comes to doing stuff and it just happens. You know, I should be wearing gloves. Super glue it. I thought about it, trust me. Uh, someone said Jeffy Bear's in here. What's up, Jeffy Bear? Oh, Loli's Off-Road's in the house. What's up, Lauren? And uh, so I seen some... I seen someone asked a question about um, if I plan on seeing Jeffy when he comes out. Absolutely, freaking Luli. I'm not letting Jeff come out here after all my whole my subscribers and stuff like that happily donated all that money so Jeffy can get a van. And then my boy Andy over there donated all of his time into helping helping Jeffy build a home out of it. You think I'm gonna miss that opportunity to not film that van and see my bro? Come on, y'all. Of course I'm going to make my, make some time to see Jeffy. Me and Jeffy talk all the time. Jeffy called me yesterday. I think it was yesterday, day before. We talk all the time. Are we still live? Uh, no, Kevin Hill, we're not still live. This is not a live stream. This is... Are you, are you having a moment? Is everything okay? Oh my gosh, Cruzy, are you okay? Are you cool? Everything cool, bro? Yeah, okay, we're gonna read some comments. Oh, Bruce Van Life Jr. didn't you remember Bruce? You remember him, don't you? Don't, don't be. Yeah, Marco says, don't bring that pee bottle to the second hand store, some of them might use it as a water bottle. You know how many times we're out there traveling somewhere and someone's drinking out of a bottle and I'm like, that looks a lot like my pee jug. It's actually quite gross. <laughs> What's wrong? 
You want me to put the camera just on you? You don't want me to talk to them? This is this is just a, is this just a cruisy live stream now? Just a you live stream? Yeah. What? You just had food? I gave you some some some. I'm not gonna say the T word to chew on. You got everything you need, bro. What do you need? You want a hug? I'll give you. A no. Uh oh, here we go. What's your problem? Are you mad because I'm on a live stream? Are you mad? <laughs> Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? When he does this, he gets scared of little things like water bottles. Watch this. Watch this. He gets like, when he does this, he just gets like, watch this. <laughs> he acts so tough, but he's a scaredy cat. Oh, uh, Mike, thanks for the treat for Cruzy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I just got a notification from Amazon. See your package on the map. We're nine stops away right now. Sorry, Amazon, we're gonna miss ya. <laughs> Cruzy's such a scaredy cat. Happy birthday to Mad Vanner. Happy birthday, bro. <laughs> Okay, we're done? Are we good? Come here. Come here. Give everybody some loving. Show everybody how little you are. People think you're so small. Chris, do you know the number one thing people say when they come meet us is we didn't know Cruzy Bear was such a freaking meathead and so big? Look at him. Look how big he is. He's freaking huge, bro. <laughs> How heavy is he now? I think Cruzy weighs about 60 pounds right now. Something like that. Yeah, Sue is right. Sue has met Cruzy. He's that Cruz is not a small dog. <laughs> Why do you have two stereo head units in your van? I don't, I only have one stereo head unit in my van. The second unit is, believe it or not, a CB radio that I never ended up connecting. I never hooked it up. I have a Kenwood um, CB radio in the front there. So my, my thought was I was gonna tune into like tow truck, I'm not, um, forestry trucks in the back country just to let them know where I was. And I've ended up never needing to use it, so I uh, I never installed it. But the head unit for it is still up there. More backcountry videos soon? Yes. I have the new business here to get going, to get kind of wrapped up here first. So we probably get another full week of really hard work around here, or a week and a half of really hard work. Then we can get out and do some more backcountry stuff. Is that helping your situation? I hear a vehicle. That's a neighbor. Who is that out there, buddy? Who's that? <laughs> Chris is gonna go check it out. You stay in here, bro. Hey. 
Hey, who was that? This is my protector. <laughs> He's so cute. You stay in here, bro. <laughs> hey, buddy, you're so cute, crazy. Lisa Marie Coleman, it's my birthday tomorrow, can I get a shout out? I started Truck Life over a month ago and I love it in a Ram 1500 4x4 with an off-road monster trailer. It's badass for a blank canvas. Lisa Marie, happy freaking birthday. So cool. And that's awesome in a 4x4 Ram truck with a monster trailer, that's pretty sick. That's pretty cool. I always love it when I hear you guys starting adventures and building out cool rigs and stuff. It's pretty awesome. Bruce says, hey, bro, awesome podcast with Well Tech. Another great job. I had a lot of fun in that podcast. It was great. Can Cruz even jump out of the van anymore? It's huge. Cruz could never jump out of the van. He has jumped out of the van before, but it's always been huge. <laughs> My van only got about this much taller, maybe an inch taller with the, with the new tires. Otherwise, it's the same, same size. Have you considered an off-road trailer behind... Have you considered an off-road trailer? Cruz, you stay in here. Have you considered an off-road trailer towed behind the beast? The only problem with doing like an off-road trailer, stuff like that, is uh, it limits on where you can park in cities. So when I travel a lot, I spend a fair amount of time, depends on where I go, like going to the Yukon and stuff like that, we're gonna be in the bush all the time. But when you're traveling like a coast to coast trip, like I will probably do next year, is I spend a lot of times in towns and cities. Once you pull the trailer, now you break all parking bylaws, which means I'm stuck to um, Walmarts and stuff like that or larger areas because you're not allowed to park in the city with a trailer. It breaks parking bylaws. So it really, really limits your travels on where you can sleep at night. Where having something with a footprint like a regular cargo van gives me freedom to park absolutely anywhere. Can you park in other places? Sure you can. You know, but you do up the risk of having that, hey man, you know, or waking up to a ticket on your window kind of thing. So, yeah, I probably will never build a trailer for this van at all. Maybe for the Ambo I've had an idea, but not for this van. It's just too big. It's too cumbersome. Yeah. Oh. We've still got like 1,100 people in here. Can I upload more shop videos, please? <laughs> Didn't you just ask me if I could upload more, more backcountry videos? <laughs> yeah, Jeffy, man. Can't wait to see you down here, bro. I'm pretty excited about you making this trip down. Pretty stoked on it. Have I thought about reselling GoPro equipment? Are you talking about like selling my GoPro stuff? No. And if you're talking about me selling like GoPro itself, no. There's so many places to buy GoPro. You would need to come to my Van and, all, van and Overland store to get camera equipment. And I don't use a lot of GoPro, so I, you know what I mean? If I used a lot of GoPro, sure, but I don't really use my GoPros a lot. I prefer just running with my iPhone, it works best. Can you make a cruise t-shirt? Absolutely, freaking lootly it will be coming at some point. I don't know when, but sometime. Uh, Jeffy Bear says, I'll be on the island for a while, but my buddy Badge will get my heater going. That's pretty cool. 
How close am I to getting a toilet in the shop? Probably two weeks. <laughs> yes, please. And a shower. So when, you know, people are working in here like Lauren, he can go upstairs and wash his dirty ass. <laughs> like us here, like when we're out here, like we just, nobody was having showers when we were here. The only one that was having showers here was uh, Chris because Chris had a shower in his Sprinter van. Um, Shane had a shower once because the guy in the, the rents the shop just behind me here let, let Shane use his shower, which was kind of nice of him. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. So hopefully in a couple weeks, we'll have a shower inside the shop here. So when uh, everybody's working around here, they can stay clean. And it's good because once you're clean, you have, just have a better feeling, a better energy to you. You know what I mean? And you stink less. I'm not saying you stink, Lauren, but sometimes. <laughs> jokes, buddy, jokes. <laughs> I'm the one that stinks. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing a cruisy t-shirt for sure. I have more, I think by, cruisy just looked at me. We, uh, we sell more of the cruise stickers than I think of any other sticker that we have on our store. Cruzy, you're the money maker around here, bro. V-neck shirts coming? Probably not. Maybe at some point, maybe next year, once we start really doing our own shirts here. But V-necks, I don't see, maybe, maybe people buy a lot of V-necks, but I don't see that being a huge thing. And for me to stock enough V-neck shirts to be able to sell them, it's just, it'd be sad to put out a V-neck shirt and all of a sudden we sell 20 and then we're sitting on like 100 shirts that never sell. I'd have to put a community poll out there. And if a hundred people said yes to a V-neck, I'd possibly think about doing it. Yeah, I understand that women like V-necks. Sure, you know what I mean? Like we'll definitely be doing doing some girl shirts. But um, we'll have to play around with that. I mean, we'll have to play around with that in all due time. Sure, if you're asking about like, girl shirts, 100%. That's a different story. Yeah, we'll definitely be carrying a couple of different styles for girl shirts for sure. Sorry, I'm a dude. I don't think about selling. When you think when you ask me about V-necks, I automatically think about dudes wearing V-neck shirts. <laughs> right away, that was exactly what I thought. Girl shirts, hundred percent, hundred percent. Cruisy hoodies. Ponder that one. I actually talked to a supplier not that long ago about uh, dog hoodies. Maybe we'll order some samples and see how they look. Caps and beanies, 100%. Off the grid shirts, 100%. JP Hanks, I see guys v necks all the time. I don't. <laughs> the only time I see guys v necks is if you're at the club and the guy needs to show off a little, a little chest cleavage. But we don't see a lot of, I don't anyway. I personally wouldn't wear a guy's V-neck myself. It's not a fat guy thing. <laughs> but lady shirts, 100% for sure. I didn't understand that you were asking for lady shirts. But yeah, 100%. Lady shirts, they're always like that. Little little T's and like the little little V's in the, in the T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> V-necks on guys is a little sus. <laughs> That's a good comment. But yeah, once once we start doing our own stuff here, we'll definitely have a line of girl shirts. Probably just a standard girl's tee and then probably a girl's V-neck. And if you're asking for anything like slouchy, things like that, absolutely no. Um, we'll stick to the basics. Stick to the things that people like and people sell. Um, I do have some really good ideas for when we start pressing our own shirts about doing some really cheap runs of shirts at the beginning and using you guys as a... Um, as an expansion to experiment using you guys as a study, I guess, sort of say. So maybe we do. Look, sorry, the dog across the way is going to come over here, I think. Cruzy and him kind of iffy. <laughs> come on, puppy, don't come over here. Okay, good. Um, using you guys as a study. So maybe releasing shirts at like our absolute cost so we make no money on it 
and maybe selling one design on two different styles of shirts and allowing you guys to kind of vote which shirts you like best, kind of giving us a chance to kind of experiment with, um, with well, one, you guys get some good cheap shirts and to try to find out what your review is on the product, on the shirt itself. You're like, I don't like the feeling of this one. I like the flow of this one. I like the thickness of this one. It might be a fun way to just, you know, sell some like super cheap shirts and, you know, allow to, you guys to give us some feedback. Because I could take a girl's V-neck shirt. I could give it to Amanda. Amanda hate it. I could give that shirt to another girl and she will love it. So I think doing a small study among people around here is going to give us a false example on the shirt where if I can get it out to some people in a, in a mass volume, say 100 people buy shirts, um, we'll get a better answer on what they like and what they don't like. Bigger girls want A-line t-shirts, longer ones. What kind of material do you find most people want? I think usually a lot of people, I know for me in a t-shirt, I prefer a 100% cotton shirt because I'm, you know, I got the boobies. I like the thicker shirt because it just sits nicer on me. I find that when you start doing like a poly blend, like a cotton, like a mixed blend, Like, uh, I like, like, I like the mixed blend ones in the summer. But I find if you're doing like one like this, where they're super, super thin, like really, really flowy. Um, like this one here is a 60% cotton, 40% poly shirt. This is a method wheel shirt. These are beautiful in the summertime, but I personally am not a fan all the time. I find because it makes me look fat. <laughs> Truth. So flowy ones for me are definitely a summer only kind of t-shirt. Or I just need to lose a little bit of weight and these will rock. But everybody's got so many different preferences. That's the thing about selling apparel is everybody's got their own opinion. So what I got to do on the channel is find the happy medium between everything have a thicker shirt to, to appease me and anybody else who likes a thicker shirt, have a thinner shirt that appeases everybody who likes a thinner shirt. Yeah, that's a hard, it's always a hard one to please absolutely everybody. So like everybody wanted like 4X and 5X shirts. We got the 4X and 5X shirts. Then everybody now wants a long one. And now that's getting pretty specific. So it's really, really, really hard to... Um, really, really hard to, to kind of stock something for everybody. It's like Patty says no poly, but everybody I know, everybody I know prefers a poly blend shirt. A hundred percent prefers a poly blend shirt. And like some of the most popular shirts on the market are a poly blend. They're usually a 60, 40. And like, I know when I got to the shop and I was showing Amanda shirts and stuff like that, they all prefer the feel of the 60, 40 poly blend. Yeah, it's, it's all a huge preference. Are the cotton shirts pre-shrunk? Most of them you get are usually pre-shrunk. That doesn't mean they're not going to shrink though. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah obviously not a straight poly shirt. That'd be freaking weird. <laughs> I'm not releasing a straight polyester shirt. Calm the freak down. It ain't the 70s anymore. So yeah, definitely no. If that's what you guys were like, no poly for. Yeah, I, dude, no, who releases a full poly shirt? I don't think that's a thing. Bamboo is soft too. I've seen a few bamboo blends that are, that are kind of cool. See, Jeff, um, this guy, Jeffrey's same thing with me. 100% collier, heavier cotton, much more comfortable. I agree. I, I personally like a heavy cotton shirt. See, but if you have, so if you guys are reading the comments right now, you guys can see. Everybody's got a hundred percent different opinion. Someone's like, no hemp fabric. Someone's like, no more stretch is better. Silk? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not releasing a silk shirt. Get with Dixon for a limited edition flannel. That'd be kind of cool. 
or we can just make our own flannel. Screw Dixon. Pretty sure I can find somewhere to make us a flannel. I would like to get some of those short sleeve work shirts that you wear at the shop, the button ups. That is 100% possible. So once we start doing stuff around here, doing our, you know, our work shirts, they look like a bowling shirt. They're black with the little gray stripe down it. They're actually Dickies. We could definitely start selling those for sure. Putting the shop logo on the front and on the back or doing something like that. 100%. Maybe releasing the Weirdos Garage ones. Yeah, Dixon is a great company. Look, I have... Those are all Dixons back there, all on the bottom. All Dixon. I'm a huge fan of my Dixon flannel. <laughs> one of my one of my comment moderators just shut a comment down and some guys like, "What would you do if World War 3 breaks out?" Bug out. I got the van for it. So funny. Yeah, I'm uh so back on the Dixon thing. I'm a big fan of Dixon. Dixon makes a damn good flannel. Probably one of the best flannels I've ever made. Or sorry, the best flannels I've ever bought. Iron-on patches. We have iron-on patches on our website currently, right now. We have a cruisy bear one. People, the patches don't do so great. They, um, the Cruisy Bear one did because they're fuzzy. They're like a little teddy bear. They look so cute. But uh, we've released patches before. They're not a huge seller. Stickers, though. My goodness. People are just like, give me more stickers. <laughs> give me more stickers. Some um, Velcro patches are really great sellers. I could try releasing a Velcro patch and see how they do. The problem with patches is there's such a such an investment into getting the patch, stocking the patch, and if they don't sell, it's unlike a sticker where they're a little bit more affordable to stock. Those patches get pricey when you're ordering like a thousand at a time. It gets chunky. You know, maybe Velcro is the way to go. I'm pretty sure they could make a an iron-on thing where you can iron that onto a Velcro section. Maybe not. Am I in the woods or am I at the shop? I'm at my shop. If I was in the woods, this wouldn't be such a clear-looking live stream. It would be... It get, with the Starlink, it can be a little bit grainy sometimes. Forget the shirts. I'm down for a shower scene calendar. The ladies would have them sold out in no time. Oh my gosh. Hey, Chrome, how did you get rich? Man, I've been releasing shower scene cameras. Now I'm laying on a bed of cash. My gosh, that'd be so funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Keith, thanks for that. I appreciate it, Keith. Big time. Shower scene calendar. That's hilarious. Chrome, what's for dinner? I'm not sure. I don't have any food in my van at all. I've got like some canned soup. Everything I have in my van is mostly frozen right now, so I don't have much. So tonight will probably be a go out for dinner kind of night for sure. How can I get a birthday present to you? I know it's in August. Um... Sometimes we give out our P.O. box, but not that often. And especially right now, because I'm so close to travel season, I won't give out my my um, my my P.O. box, mainly for the reason that if it comes when I'm gone, then it causes a problem for, for my stuff stacking up over here. So um, maybe when I come back after my travel season, but not right now. It's too close to travel season. Do you have the engraving machine that you were playing with a while ago? Yes. 
showers only fans. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Shower scenes on, on Vansity Van Life's only fans. That'd be hilarious. But yeah, I do still have the engraving machine. Next, you're going to tell us you have an OnlyFans page. No. Should I start one? <laughs> I don't know. People are getting rich on there. Maybe that. Maybe that's the golden ticket. Feed pics. <laughs> Campbell Soup has a new ghost pepper chicken noodle soup. That sounds pretty good. Stephanie and Polly, thank you. Chipping in for the shower scene calendar. <laughs> Oh, you girls are hilarious. That's funny. <laughs> Someone said, Mo uh, Moni said, you, you would bank. PW says, no thanks. <laughs> yes, we're still live. So hilarious shower scenes. <laughs> Team ATM says that uh, he just farted. Thanks for the information. <laughs> Appreciate it. A cruisy calendar. So um, back in my early years of living in my van, I released a calendar. And everybody was asking for it. They're like, we need a calendar, we need a calendar, we need a calendar. So I released it. Nobody bought it. I sold like a couple. And then you're just sitting on calendars at that point. Um, it didn't do well. I think with now day and age, with calendars being on your phone, that, that one you hang up in your home was just not an exciting purchase for people. So I was just reading the comments. A lot of people like, oh, yeah, 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 calendars, calendars, calendars. And it just didn't do well. And I ended up losing money, actually. I didn't make any money at all. I ended up losing. Right? So, yeah. I think maybe if we do things like that, maybe we do a pre-order. That way I know the orders are for sure. Because otherwise what happens is then you end up sitting on a box of 100 calendars and nobody wanted. So maybe doing a pre-order for those kind of things is uh, would be kind of cool. It's like limited edition, pre-order only. Yeah, that's I like that idea. Paula said I would force you to take showers. Don't worry, be happy. He said, yeah, calendars don't do well. Because I haven't... <laughs> Urbex Overland says, what about a cruise pooping calendar? That would be flipping hilarious. <laughs> we could do a whole series of calendars. The cruise pooping calendar would actually be really funny. I'll get him all his funny faces. I know this is a horrible subject. But that's what happens when we're getting to the end of a live stream. Things start to get weird. <laughs> Someone says stickers are enough, bro. <laughs> oh, guys. Um, we're going to say goodbye. I'm going to go get some food. It's 7.37 p.m. here. I want to thank everybody for coming by the live stream here today. Thank you to everybody who brought in some super chats here today. And everybody who gifted YouTube memberships to other people in our community here. That stuff means the freaking world to me that you give amongst the community. And to, for those of you that were gifted a YouTube membership, maybe you guys will stick around. Maybe you enjoy what we do over there. It would be awesome to keep that family over there growing. Um, I love you guys big time. And I'm so sorry that I've been missing so many videos recently. But um, there will be one tomorrow if I just shut the hell up and turn my camera on so I can finish that video. So I am going to go do that. Thanks, guys, for being here. Peace out. And I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.